2017, we lost one of the most talented vocalists the Shores have ever produced. Uh, there are many great vocalists we know, obviously, but there hasn't been anybody quite like John who had this unique ability to provide this emotive delivery, you know, the ability to convey very deep emotions with that unique voice. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I, I think John was completely original. You know, he had he had um, a very, very powerful top range, but also he had this deep uh, baritone range that he could pull on. Um, and he's one of the few vocalists, I think, that could be convincing in that top register as well as the bottom register. Um, but I mean, he, he was, um, it was a very um, endearing voice, you know, it would draw, it would draw people in, and as you say, very emotion, emotive um, voice. And, uh, you know, that is not just what John was. I mean, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, his abilities, it was not just um, his amazing vocal talent, but obviously, you know, he was a, uh, an iconic bass guitarist as well. Um, and uh, an incredible songwriter. So really, mm. uh, you know, for me, John John had it all. So I was very, very fortunate to be in a position where I got to work with him uh, for, you know, for a number of years. Your first meeting with him at uh, Brian Lane's office, the, the Asia manager at the, at the time, what were your first impressions? Because you're coming from different backgrounds. Uh, so... What was it like when you first I met? I think initially we hit it off socially, and uh, and uh, and he said, "You know, did you fancy fancy a drink? Let's go to the pub." Uh, and that was the first time I met him. So, um, and his, <laughs> his girlfriend, who then became his wife, was working in the office at the time, and we we sloped off, and we really, you know, we really had a a good good rapport. And I think the fact that we both came from similar backgrounds, you know, we were brought up on church music and um uh you know we, we were born outside of london so uh you know it was it was a, a, a bonding really and i think that when we started to what when when the formation of asia was finalized you know we had steve and carl uh i think that john and i felt very close bonds as, as, as writers you know that because we as i say we we come from similar backgrounds and that was very mm. um uh, you know, we just hit it off straight away. Uh, both you and John, as you just said, have, have grown up around uh, choral music. I mean, his brother was a was a choir master and a church organist, yeah. dad, and that played into these huge, emotionally charged choruses. Didn't it? And uh, it's not until you say that when you go back, as I did yesterday and the day before, I was going back listening to all all sorts of it again. Yeah, I remember being sat in church on a Sunday and I, I you know, you have these um, huge choruses and these, these hymns and you can see where the crossover came. That's absolutely right. You know, I think that my dad was a church organist and I grew up singing in choirs. So it's all, it was almost in both of our DNAs. And I think that that's one of the reasons why, you know, John had not really had the opportunity, I think, in, uh, you know, in, in King Crimson or UK to manifest that sort of arrangement of vocal arrangements and i think when you know when we collided um that's when we really started to think about these big anthemic choruses that were ov obviously influenced by by church music but um and so i think with my my schooling at uh you know when I, from music college with the actual notation and the arrangements of putting these these huge vocal blocks together uh I think that John and I really work very hard on saying, well, you know, this this is the line that that you know he's going to sing, and then the next one, and then maybe I'll do a top one on, and, and we had Steve to do some of the lower uh, register stuff. So we had this this whole big block, and uh, and it really, I think it it actually influenced our songwriting as well because we wanted to go for those big choruses, and I think that um, you know that's why we got this tag of being this. You know, arena rock type supergroup. Even though at that point we'd not, you know, we hadn't finished the album, we'd not released the album. But uh, I think that was one of the hallmarks of the success of Asia. Not so much. Um, I mean, we're obviously all talented instrumentalists. You know, Carl's drumming and Steve's uh, wild guitar playing, and uh, 
uh, you know, John's bass and my keyboards. You know, we had all that as well. But at the same time, I think that John and I were very much focused on uh, on getting the songs and the melodies across. And so uh, that's really how Asia formed. It was, it had that, you know, it had the progressive rock players, but at the same time, um, it was it was a different it was a different outing for everybody. I think 